Okay, Gerda, you got your gloves on now. Yes. I keep forgetting. <laughs> it's feeling hot. Okay. You know, in This is a classic where Gerda is trying to pour some microfibers into the epoxy and it all came out instead of just a little bit. What do you call this? 406. 406. Alright, I'm putting it back in. Oh man. We're going through a lot of epoxy, so I ordered some more online and had it delivered through Canada Post. And I guess the guys can't read the label, but it looks like they've been dropped. This uh, was dropped about four feet. And uh, the can is actually a little bit shorter and I can't fit my uh, pumps into it. So I'm gonna have to transfer this into my old tins. This was a big job putting the little skids on the bottom of the boat. First of all, I had to drill holes from the inside through the bottom to the outside and chamfer them inside so the screws uh, wouldn't stick out in the bottom. And then we had to dry fit these uh, strips on and then we had to uh, put epoxy on them and then screw them on and then clean up the epoxy afterwards. It was good to have uh, Gerda's help here. Installing the seats was a bit of a job. The plans say that uh, the seats are supposed to slope down from the bow and down from the stern a little bit, and then the center thwart is supposed to be uh, flat. So I uh, ended up using a level to try and do that. Uh, fitting the uh, brackets took a little bit of time. Uh, they uh, had to be tacked in with some epoxy, and then we had to fill it the top, and then uh, flip the boat over and fill it uh, inside. This is a screw up where I was trying to drill a hole to locate the dagger board and I got a little carried away and went a little too far. But it's not a problem that can't be fixed with a little bit of epoxy later on. We got the uh, rope in from our supplier, Canada Rope. Uh, it took a couple of weeks to get but uh, we've got uh, about 20-25 feet of this uh, manila. It's sort of a uh, real rough, it's three quarter inch and kind of hairy and, and stiff. And also got uh, about 25 feet of uh, three quarter inch nylon. So this is what I'm gonna try putting on the gunnel. And I'm gonna do a little test. Uh, what I've done, I've just taken a two by four, I've uh, routed out some three quarter inch grooves there. I've epoxied uh, the uh, two different types of rope to this and we'll try some unscientific tests to see how uh, which one might work best. Right now I kind of like the looks of the nylon. You know the manila is nice and uh, traditional but uh, it's kind of hairy, it's hard and because it uh, this, this nylon is synthetic so it should stand up better to weather conditions. It's not going to shrink and uh, do weird things that the manila might do when it gets wet. So we'll test it and see, uh, see what might happen. So we're going to try some very 
scientific test, sir. Now that's uh, how he's going to stand up. happy when I went around to pull the clamps off and they all came off and weren't uh, stuck to the boat. I have had uh, a few clamps become uh, part of the boat sometimes when they got uh, epoxied on. When I decided to uh, run the rope around the gunnel of the boat, it uh, created some changes that I had to make. One of them is on the bow of the boat, and I had to figure out how to get the rope to uh, kind of go in the right spot in the bow. So I've had to make this curved piece, which is about the same size as the gunnel going along the sides, and ride it out and try and fit it onto the bow. And it seems to be working pretty good, and I'm happy that uh, I did it without cutting my fingers off too.